Welcome to Rough Riders, I'm Jay Taylor. This weekend's adventure has us camping at Timberline Campground in the Pike National Forest. So let's go take a look at this campground and see what it's all about. Timberline Campground is about an hour and a half in light traffic southwest of Denver. It's located off of Highway 285 in the Pike National Forest. As you pass the small towns of Bailey and Grant, you're getting close to the turnoff and you're looking for Country Road 124. Now the campground itself is located in uh, two loops uh, just off this main highway and uh, there's uh, a total of 30 campsites uh, for the the campground spread between these two loops. At the time of this recording, sites are $22 a night and extra vehicles are seven bucks a day and the day use parking fee is $7 a day as well. Uh, there is no campground host on site, uh, there, but there is a campground host. They're a couple miles south of the uh, uh, campground and they do uh, come around the campground twice a day to get people checked in, clean the restrooms, all of that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, they also bring firewood and stuff in case folks want to buy some firewood. Each site comes with a picnic table and a fire ring. Then there are some sites like this one here that have also the barbecue grill. Some sites are fairly secluded with trees on all sides. Here you can see a couple sites together. Uh, less tree coverage, less isolation. Uh, so this is great if you're you know, camping with uh, friends and want to be uh, close together in, in almost a group-like setting. So here's a look at our site. Uh, we've got neighbors on our left. Then we have a double site, site six and seven. Our daughter was supposed to be joining us this weekend, but uh, something came up and she couldn't make it. So we got a nice uh, double wide parking area. There's two tables and two fire rings. And then we've got a big gap between us and our neighbors on the other side as well. One thing to note about our site is that it is a double site, and so it has to be booked together. You cannot book uh, uh, the sites individually. So as I said, we, are, we were planning to have our daughter with us, so we booked uh, the double site. But um, kind of looking at it, I, it's great for, for tent double site, as a, as a tent double site. I think if we were trying to get my daughter's pop-up and our teardrop in this site, it would probably be a little cramped. So, um, I would say, you know, reserve this one if you're doing a, a uh, tent camping uh, with, with uh, another, another family. But um, for, you know, two RVs, probably going to be a little, little, little packed, a little, little cramped. So here's a couple of sites here, less tree coverage, um, a little bit closer to the neighbors, but still lots of shade and lots of uh, uh, space to spread out. There's a single vault toilet serving each loop. It doesn't smell terrible, but uh, there is some odor there and it is cleaned every day. There is a single uh, dumpster serving both loops. It's right at the uh, intersection where uh, one loop ends and then the next loop uh, begins. There is a small uh, overflow parking area. Uh, there is no camping allowed in this area, but you can park your extra vehicles here if you've got more than what you can fit at your site. This is a main turnoff road uh, to get to the campsite. If your GPS uh, is taking you down some other road and it doesn't look like this, you're on the wrong road. Uh, my wife was using ways to navigate to the campground and it had us pass this road and go to the next one and it turned out to be an old uh, 4x4 off-road Jeep trail and uh, we got on that road. It was a little bit of a nightmare to, to get ourselves turned around and back onto the right road. So. Uh, if your road doesn't look like this, uh, stop, turn around, and uh, you know, come back because your, your GPS is probably taking you down the wrong road. If you are camping here and you hear some gunfire, don't be alarmed. You are in a national forest. Uh, we've had people uh, target shooting uh, all weekend long. Um, they're well far away from the campground, so there's no uh, risk or anything, at least for us, of you know anybody uh, getting hurt because they're... They're quite a ways away from uh, the campground. This is the road that leads up to the campsite. Uh, you can see it's uh, for licensed vehicles only, but we are in a national forest 
and off-roading is allowed here so if you uh, bring your dirt bikes and your quads and things like that uh, there are uh, a number of trails right in the area there's some guys unloading dirt bikes right there while we haven't seen any big wildlife on this trip there are clearly deer in the area I've never seen her act like this campground is just off the highway so you do hear some of the highway noise uh, throughout the day it's not bad but uh, it is uh, you know it is within earshot so it, you don't get quite the peace and quiet that you might be expecting uh, from a campground high in the mountains Okay, things to do and some final thoughts. Lots of things to do in the area. Um, according to the map, we're about 10, 12 miles away from some, some pretty big lakes and reservoirs. Uh, I don't know if that they're big enough for power boating, but certainly big enough for fishing and kayaking and all of those sorts of things. Uh, obviously hiking, we're here in the Pike National Forest, lots of hiking available in the area. Uh, as you saw, off-roading. Uh, so, um, you know, there are lots of trails, uh, uh, a pretty extensive trail system in the area. Uh, you know, shooting and target shooting and things like that. Um, you know, you are in a national forest, so that's allowed. I used to do that a lot when I was a kid. Uh, so you have lots of things to do, you know, right in this, in this uh, immediate area. Uh, the campground itself is uh, pretty small uh, with only 22 sites. Um, so maybe it's a little bit of a hidden gem, I don't know. There was a lot of open sites here um, that, we, that we saw that uh, were first come, first serve. You are completely dry camping. I did not see any potable water faucets anywhere, so uh, you do need to plan for that. Obviously, no power at the sites uh, either, so uh, you know you need to plan accordingly. But uh, you know it's great for tent camping for sure. Uh, for RVs, most of the spots look like they're big enough to fit. You know, at least a mid-size RV. Obviously, with our teardrop, it's plenty big enough for that. But um, there you go. There's a there's a quick look at the campground. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Uh, I've got more camping trips coming up, so I'll be doing uh, more campground reviews as we uh, finish out the summer and, and stuff like that. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time here on Rough Riders. Thanks for watching.